one trackway and another one goes off that way. If we relied solely on body fossils of land animals, we wouldn't know anything about the paleontology history of British Columbia. We know what animals were roaming around the province 140 million years ago, and it's all thanks to the fossil footprints. If we didn't have them, we would be missing out a huge part of British Columbia's history. We're at the uh, Prince George Exploration Place in uh, British Columbia, and we have a lot of dinosaur footprints in the public accessible gallery from a variety of uh, rock formations and ages. Uh, the one that I'm sitting next to right now is a trackway from the Peace River Canyon of a dinosaur track type called Ironicnites gracilis. And there's three footprints in this trackway on a very nice rippled surface. And over here is another footprint of a, of a larger theropod, meat-eating dinosaur, and this one's also from the Peace River Canyon. And you can see, it's fairly shallow, but you can see the digits not too badly here. Here we have a very small dinosaur footprint. It's a very tiny ornithopod track, and right behind it is a much larger track of the same type called the Ambidactylus gethingi. Over here, we have a track of a Tyrannosaur, uh, one of the few in the world that was collected uh, from northeastern British Columbia from a much younger formation that was only about 75 million years old. It has skin impressions that are evident on the sides of the toes and in a few other places. In the gallery of the exploration place, there's replicas and uh, material of fossil footprints on display for people to see, and that's an excellent teaching tool. British Columbia has a lot of rock exposed that has many different time periods exposed. And there's a lot of people that visit the outdoors and visit the wilderness in British Columbia. So they're going to be going into areas that have fossil footprints exposed. Being able to see these footprints firsthand, being able to get up close and personal with the footprints and develop that search image, it's going to make it that much easier for people who don't have paleontology training to go out into the bush, go see some rocks, and they'll be able to recognize those footprints. And then that gives them an avenue to report that fossil to the museum, and hopefully it'll result in more specimens being found in British Columbia. This is my favorite specimen on display in the gallery. I absolutely love Cretaceous Age birds, and I really love their footprints because their footprints are the best record that we have of exactly what kind of birds were running around in the Cretaceous with the dinosaurs and how many different kinds of birds are running around. They are a record of bird behavior, so they show us what these birds were doing. And right now, they're, you can almost imagine them skittering around on the surface looking for food, avoiding waves, maybe avoiding large dinosaurs walking past like shorebirds would do today when we walk past them. So this is just a beautiful little snapshot in time of the day in the life of a Cretaceous Age shorebird. Our trackways are some of the most significant pieces that we do have. Uh, most of that work has come out of the Tumbler Ridge area and beyond. The trackways are really interesting because you get the opportunity to really look at how animals interacted and so you can start to figure out what their culture was like, how they hunted, what the groups they lived in. Uh, the trackways tell more of a story in many cases than the actual bones themselves. Ta-da! Well, aren't you pretty? In the collections, we have a variety of tracks from the Miss Mountain Formation, the Gething Formation, and the Dunvegan Formation. So these are all different ages. These are novel, unique uh, collections. Like, they're, they're collections that nobody else has. We're looking at a specimen that's from the uh, southeastern British Columbia, uh, from a coal mine down there, from the Jurassic Cretaceous boundary. And it is a very important specimen, which is of a sauropod. And it's the first record of that group of animals, the largest group of dinosaurs in, that are known, uh, from Canada. Uh, before 2000, there was no record of this group of dinosaurs in Canada at all. One of the reasons why I went down into this mine was to try to find some record 
of this group, this very important group that were in the northern part of the US, but we had no, not a bit of bone, not a scrap of tooth uh, from Canada. So it was very nice to actually have a successful mission and find what you were looking for. Nice big heel, has a clawed digit there, another clawed digit there, and another one there, and all three of them are going off in this direction, sort of curved, and that's towards the midline of the trackway. So the other sauropod foot would have been over there. And then two blunt claws that are the inner digits. And it makes a whole big footprint. Now this is an infill of that footprint. So what happened is the animal made a step and in order to preserve the footprint, some sediment came and filled it in. And that's what we have is this infill that's left over. So everything's kind of reverse of how it should be. <laughs> We uncovered 750 square meters, and that's uh, probably over about 12, 1300 footprints. Today, we're at the Six Peaks Dinosaur Track Site with the CSVP, which is Canadian Society of Vertebrate Paleontology Tour Group. So it's a whole group of uh, paleontologists, all my colleagues, and we're touring them around the site, and it's the first time that just about all of them have seen it. The Six Peaks Dinosaur Track Site is located uh, just a little bit to the west of the town of Hudson's Hope and the WAC Bennett Dam in the Carbon Creek Basin. The tracks go all the way to the top of this hill. So that's 6,000 square meters that we could potentially uncover, and which is a lot of footprints. <laughs> and I think if we're able to continue work on this site, uh, I think we're gonna see more and more additions to the diversity. The Six Peaks Dinosaur Track Site is very unique because it is the only track site of its size from the Gething Formation that is currently not underwater. Back in the 1930s, a bunch of tracks were found in the Peace River Canyon, are described, but uh, those have since disappeared under the water. One of the dams went online in 1979. So it's been over 30 some odd years since we've seen a track site of this scale. And this one track site actually has more tracks in it than all the track sites that were found in the Peace River Canyon. This is a trackway of, uh, uh, the track type's called Gypsychnites. It's a trackway of a small to medium-sized ornithopod, which is a small quadrupedal plant-eating dinosaur. It had been a little bigger than a collie, uh, but it has footprints and handprints. And I'm showing you this one because this is a very clear uh, trackway, but there's another trackway that I want to show you where the animal actually tripped. That's, you know, animal walking on all fours tripped. Uh, so there's a, the right footprint here, a left, and the tripping event happened right here. So there's a, a very long sort of slipping drag mark here. And in fact, from this foot, you can see that there's this very long drag mark that comes out of it. Uh, so there's a bit of a stumble event right here. And the foot settled up here. And um, you know, there's a little bit of confusion here. We're still not sure exactly what happened here, but it looks like the animal almost came to a full stop and then it proceeded normally over here, but with really long drag marks in the, in the, uh, in the surface. So it's kind of a, you know, even a, even a four-footed animal can have a bad day. This is a pretty cool track. Yeah, this is definitely one of the coolest tracks here. It's from a pretty rare group of dinosaurs that we don't see too often this far north up here in Canada. Or anywhere, really. Yeah. They're not really, even, even elsewhere in North America, they're never really common dinosaurs. Oh, and in Canada, they're only known from a few bones from much later in time that mm -hmm. I think are pretty questionable in terms of their identification. But this is absolutely clear. It's got the four functional toes. Right there. Nice skinny there, toes. There, there. That have quite broad divergence. And this is the hallmarks of one of these therizinosaur theropods. Yeah, it's really cool. Yep. This would be the first of these in British Columbia. This is yep. like another cool thing about yep. British Columbia paleontology because Alberta has the bones, but BC has all the footprints, which is pretty great. Yep. So we get records of things that you don't necessarily see in other parts of Canada. Yep. The track site does have a temporary protective status on it. It's uncertain what will happen with that status after its five years are up. Unfortunately, the future of this track site is uncertain, and it shouldn't be because it is a treasure. What we need to see is more emphasis in British Columbia on research, on science, on conservation, and on protection. Because if we don't do those activities, and if we don't take those activities seriously, 
we are going to lose all of the information that we have on the fossils. And it will be a loss that will be a loss forever. We'll never get it back. We can't go to Dinosaur Mart and pick up more fossil resources. We have one chance to do this right. And if the science and the conservation are not the top priorities, then we have failed British Columbia's fossil heritage.